Well, happy Friday, Hope College. <clears throat> happy Friday. <clears throat> this, is a, this is a huge weekend at Hope College. We have dance marathon starting this afternoon. We have um, the women's basketball team is in the NCAA playoffs this weekend. So lots going on. Um, it's going to be a great weekend, and we're going to have a good uh, chapel this morning. Uh, to kick us off, Ari's going to read some scripture. Ari from Livonia, she's a freshman. Our scripture today comes from the book of Ecclesiastes. Hear the word of God. Meaningless, meaningless, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? Surely the fate of human beings is like that of the animals. As one dies, so dies the other. Who knows if the human spirit rises upward and if the spirit of the animal goes down into the earth? Enjoy life with your wife, whom you love, all the days of this meaningless life. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might, for in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Jeez, Ari, why'd you pick such a depressing <laughs> passage of scripture to read? <laughs> Just... <clears throat> I'm just kidding. I picked the scripture this morning, um, and I actually picked it. <clears throat> I've got a little bug in my throat. I actually picked it because we're talking about depression this morning. Uh, if you've been around uh, this year, you know that I've been speaking off and on uh, in chapel, and I've been talking about hope. And the last few times I've spoken, I've talked about how we can find hope in hard places. And we're going to continue on that theme this morning. And this morning we're talking about depression. And our topic is how we can find hope in depression. Uh, what we know about depression is that depression is very linked with anxiety. There's a lot of correlation between anxiety and depression. And what you know, if you've been paying attention to anything going on in the world today, especially over the last few days, there's a lot to be anxious about. There's a lot to be anxious about in the world. There's a lot to be anxious about in your lives. And the problem with anxiety is you can't live in that sort of elevated state of anxiety and fear forever. It's just not sustainable. And eventually that state, that elevated state of anxiety, you get to the point where you say, I don't know, maybe none of this matters. Maybe this is all meaningless. And that's when anxiety turns to depression. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning, hope in depression. Uh, before I jump into it, I have to make one really big disclaimer, which is that if you're battling depression now, most of what I'm going to say is not relevant to you. If you're in the middle of depression now, you need a professional counselor, you need therapy, you need to go through to a professional, and that's not me. What we're talking about mainly this morning is the spiritual side of depression. And what we know about depression is that depression is multifaceted. There's a physical side of depression. There's an emotional side of depression. There's a physiological side of depression, and there's a spiritual side of depression. Depression is a multi-dimensional thing, and Christianity recognizes that. The Bible recognizes that. I think a lot of us tend to think of, of science maybe as having a more nuanced view when it comes to these things, and we think of Christianity maybe as being a little too simplistic, a little too reductionistic when it comes to things like uh, depression and anxiety. Actually, the exact opposite is true. Uh, in fact, science is actually guilty, at least for a long period of human history, science is actually guilty of being overly simplistic when it comes to things like depression. In fact, for a long time, and it's not the case anymore, but for a long time, scientists thought we could cure depression through a pill. It's not the case anymore, but for a long time, scientists essentially believed that. What we know now about medication is that medication works for some people some of the time. So if you're battling depression, yeah, maybe I suppose try it, but medication alone will not be a sufficient response because depression is a multifaceted issue. There are a lot of different components to depression, and the Bible recognizes that. In fact, Christianity recognized that more than 2,000 years ago. Uh, there's a, a story in the Bible, which I would have loved to read to you this morning, but it's just too long to fit into a chapel talk. It's in 1 Kings 19. And I encourage you to read it on your own time. It's a fascinating story. It's a thousand years before Jesus. So it's more than 2,000 years ago. And in 1 Kings 19, Elijah, Elijah, the greatest prophet of all time, is depressed. And Elijah basically gets to the point where he can't take the pressure anymore. The anxiety has gotten to him. And Elijah goes out into the desert 
And he says to God, I'm done. I wanna die, take my life, I'm done. And the way that God responds to Elijah in this story recognizes that, that God sees depression as a multi-dimensional issue. The first thing God does, God sends an angel to Elijah and the angel makes bread and then asks Elijah to eat the bread and then tells Elijah to take a nap. And just so that we don't miss it, the same thing happens twice. Angel appears again, makes bread, asks Elijah to get some sleep. Then, then God shows up and God asks Elijah to take a long walk through the desert. Do you know what that is? That's diet, sleep, and exercise. That's the physical side of depression. And that, that is, and the Bible recognized 2,000 years ago that diet, sleep, and exercise are some of the most important things you can do for your mental health. Diet, sleep, and exercise. That's the physical side of depression. The next thing that happens in this story in 1 Kings 19 is that God gets Elijah talking. And God says to Elijah, Elijah, what's going on? Tell me, what is going on? Why are you here? And Elijah starts talking. Elijah starts talking to God. And do you know what God does while Elijah's talking? Nothing. God does nothing. He just listens. He just listens to, to Elijah. And that's what good counselors do. That's what good therapists do. They just listen and they journey with you through this conversation. And that's what God does. God essentially in 1 Kings 19 is acting as a counselor to Elijah. Counseling and therapy is an incredibly important part of battling depression. And we recognize that at Hope College. And that's why we have a counseling service at Hope. It's called CAPS. And you should take advantage of it. You should. And you say, well, if I go to counseling, doesn't that kind of mean that I'm messed up? The answer is yes, it does mean you're messed up, but we're all messed up. The question isn't, are you messed up? The question is, do you recognize that you're messed up? And all of us go through periods of life where we need a professional counselor or therapist to journey with us through that season. And if you get to the end of your life and you've never used a counselor, it's not because you didn't need it, it's because you were too stubborn to recognize the fact that you needed it. So counseling is an incredibly important part of battling depression, and we recognize that at Hope, and so does God, because you see it in 1 Kings 19. Then what happens next is then God starts to talk to Elijah about the spiritual side of his depression. And what we see in 1 Kings 19 is that Elijah has some spiritual beliefs that are wrong. He just has some beliefs that are off, and those misguided beliefs end up being the core of his depression. But God doesn't go there until he deals with the physical side and the emotional side of depression first. Then he gets to the spiritual side. And what that's saying, I think, for, in part at least, is that there is oftentimes, if not all the time, and I would suggest all the time, a spiritual side of depression. And a lot of places are really good at dealing with the physical side of depression and the emotional side of depression and the physiological side of depression, but a lot of places ignore the spiritual side of depression. And we don't at Hope College because we believe that that would be an incomplete response to depression. We don't ignore that at Hope because we believe that depression has a spiritual component to it. Why? Because what you believe spiritually it dictates where you find your meaning. What you believe spiritually about this life and about what happens after this life, that dictates where you find your meaning. And if this life is all there is, then in fact, there actually is a lot to be depressed about. If this life is all there is, then it is pretty pointless. When Solomon, King Solomon wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, which Ari just read from, when King Solomon wrote that, he's saying that out of wisdom. The Bible says Solomon is the wisest person that's ever lived. And Solomon is saying that stuff, meaningless, meaningless, it's all meaningless. He's saying that out of wisdom. See, oftentimes I think we think of depressed people as like delusional, like uh, they're, you know, they're not seeing clearly. Well, that's not what Solomon is saying. Solomon is saying, actually, all of you are wearing rose colored glasses and I've taken them off and I see that all of this is meaningless. He's saying that out of wisdom and he has these just biting lines. Which, which I actually love because he, he starts off in one direction and then he yanks us in another direction. He has these lines like, enjoy life with your wife whom you love all the days of your meaningless life. <laughs> if, if you have a friend getting married this summer, you might try that verse as a toast at the wedding. <laughs> it's Ecclesiastes 9, might work well. You know, a lot of people say, uh, I don't like the Old Testament. The Old Testament is dark and depressing. Yeah, the Old Testament is dark and depressing and we're supposed to read it and we're supposed to sit with that and we're supposed to process it. And then we read the New Testament and the New Testament contains the good news, the gospel. You've heard that word, the gospel. The word gospel literally means good news. The question is, what's the news? News is an event. It's not a theology. News is an event. It's something that happened. Did you hear about what happened? It's an event. The question is, what's the news? What's the event? 
The event is that Jesus came back from the dead. That's the news, that's the event. And the significance of that event is that it shows us that this life is not all there is. This life is not all there is. And that was an open question in the Old Testament. That was an open question in the Old Testament. And that's why you see Solomon in Ecclesiastes saying things like, I don't know, maybe humans and animals share the same fate. Who's to say that humans go up, their spirit goes up and animals go down? Who's to say? That's an open question in the Old Testament. And the New Testament answers those questions definitively. Uh, there's a, there's a, a, a chapter in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 where Paul is writing, and Paul is essentially writing in response to what Solomon says in Ecclesiastes. And Paul has these lines where he says, uh, no humans and animals don't share the same fate. Humans have one kind of spirit and animals have another kind of spirit. People say, I don't like the Bible. The Bible contradicts itself. Yes, the Bible contradicts itself. That's because there are parts of the Bible that are one person arguing with another person. And you have to decide who's right. You have to decide who you believe. And Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 is responding to what Solomon said in Ecclesiastes. And Paul says, if there is no resurrection, then actually Solomon is right. There is no point to this life. You might as well eat and drink and be merry. And he throws Solomon's words right back at him. But Paul says, if there is a resurrection, if there is a resurrection, then that ought to change everything. Because if Jesus is who he says he was, if what Jesus represents, which is what he promises, if Jesus' resurrection represents the exact same thing that will happen to all of us, that we will come back from the dead, all of us, the good, the bad, we will all come back from the dead and that reality will start over. And that when reality starts over, what happens to us in that new reality will be based on the seeds that we sow in this reality. If that's true, then that gives everything meaning. Nothing is meaningless. And that's what Paul says. And that's what the New Testament says definitively, that everything has meaning because this is not the end. And that meaning gives you hope. And that hope allows you to look at the most tragic, sad, depressing components of your life. And you know what it allows you to do? It allows you to trash talk them, to trash talk your depression, to trash talk the sad, depressing things of this life. And that's actually what Paul does in 1 Corinthians 15. Paul has these great lines where he's trash talking even death Paul says, death, where's your sting? Death, where's your victory? Death, you can try to bring me down, but I'm coming back up. That's our hope, that's our hope. And as ugly as this world can look, our hope is in that, our hope is in that resurrection. So if you're going through something now, I want you to recognize that depression is multi-dimensional. There's a physical side of depression and I need you to take care of yourself. Diet, sleep, exercise. I also need you to understand that there's an emotional side and a physiological side to depression, and that's where counseling comes in. But I also beg you to understand that there's a spiritual side to your depression. And if you're at a point in your life where you're asking some big questions about life and meaning and death and resurrection, this is the perfect season to be rolling around in those questions. We're in the season of Lent. And so find somebody you can talk to about those questions. The Campus Ministries team would be honored to have those conversations with you. Find a professor who would like to have those conversations with you. Join a Bible study. Find somewhere to have those conversations. That's what will give you meaning. I want to end with a quote, and this is how Paul ends his chapter. It's 1 Corinthians 15, and this whole chapter is responding to what Solomon is saying in Ecclesiastes. And this is how Paul closes that chapter. He says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Hope, go in peace and go in hope.